Hello, Happy New Year, and welcome to this year's first Midweek Connection. My name is Todd Jordan. I serve as senior pastor here at Strawbridge United Methodist Church. I'm delighted that you've joined me for this. I'm so excited. It is the first week of 2023, and I already learned something new. Apparently, my son's uh, car, it's a 2019 Kia Forte, needed a new air cabin filter. So, um, uh, I was going to just take it in and, and have it done. And my wife's like, you know, I think those air filters are like maybe $15. And why don't you get online, see if you can figure out how to do it. Now, I am not mechanically inclined. Um, I am not a do-it-yourselfer. So I was a little intimidated, but I got on YouTube. Literally, it's like a two-minute video on how to change the air filter for, your, for the cabin in a 2019 Kia Forte. So it took like two minutes. I would, now, please don't be impressed. It was so easy to figure out and so easy to do, but it was something new, something I'd never done before. And I was pretty excited by that. You know, there's something about learning something new. There's something about being able to do something new. Number one, it's good for your brain. Uh, I hear it keeps you young, so we'll see if that that's the case. Um, but it also feels really good. And I couldn't help but notice, you know, God is all about doing something new. Um, God is all about redemption and restoration. And uh, as a matter of fact, in the Revelation 21, uh, toward the end of the Bible, um, John the prophet is writing that, um, he says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. The sea was no more. And later on, uh, he hears um, God on the throne saying, see, I am making all things new. Now, what's interesting is this is not the beginning of the Bible. This is not in Genesis where God literally makes creation out of nothing. This is after everything has has come to its, its finality. Um, God is still making things new. There's always something new going on. There's always a reason for hope. Uh, and and by the way, God is the ultimate do-it-yourselfer, right? God does everything personally, including this. He says in the same chapter, verse 3, uh, I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples and God himself will be with them. God personally is making sure that everything that was wrong with creation, everything that was broken with creation, everything that was just not right is going to be fully restored. And what will this mean? It says that he will wait, wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more for the first things have passed away. I really feel like the big difference between heaven and hell is not one place is where the good people are and one place is where the bad people are, so much as it is that heaven is that place where there's always the possibility for something new. Hell is that place when we just get stuck and see no hope for tomorrow. I've been in both places in my life and I can tell you um, a life without hope is not a life I wanna be a part of. God's promise is it doesn't have to be. Whatever seems hopeless in this world, whatever seems hopeless in your life, whatever seems hopeless in creation, God has a plan to make new, to make possible, and to restore into the beauty that God intended from the very beginning when God first made all things new. So I want to just leave you uh, with this message of hope as we begin a new year. Um, I want to challenge you Try to learn something new this week, uh, this month, this year. Try to do new things. Try to uh, experiment uh, new ways of thinking, new ways of doing. Um, but also know that God has a plan for you, for me, for all of creation. And that God is all about making things new. And when we have that promise, we have that hope. God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you this Sunday.